Hi, I'm Heinbach. Good to have you back. In this video, I'm going to give an introduction to a beautiful yet pretty unknown instrument, the Seat Lombarde Deerhorn Organ. As some of you might know, I love Seat Lombarde instruments. Peter Blasser creates synthesizers that appeal to me both sonically and aesthetically. The sound is so lush and warm that I don't feel recording them to tape adds much. The wooden construction is something I, as a piano player, appreciate to touch. The modular player in me appreciates the banana cables that are in many ways superior to what Eurorack has to offer. The whole Seat Lombarda orchestra plays really well together. The instruments were made with each other in mind. So if you like one of these, chances are you will like the others, which is a bit heavy on your wallet. That said, these instruments are still pretty rare, you can't buy them in a regular music shop. And among these rare instruments, the Dierhorn organ is one of the least known. So I'm making a video to show you what this instrument can do. So what is the Dierhorn organ? In short, it's a three-voice, analog, semi-modular FM synthesizer that you play using radio antennas that measure distance. Peter's elevator pitch is, it was first created to answer Clara Rockmore's original complaint with the theremin. Can there be more than one pitch? Clara Rockmore was one of the most famous players of the theremin in the 1930s. Left theremin responded that one would need more than two arms, but the Dierhorn makes this possible by extracting gestural information from the radio fields and using it to control pitch and envelope. So, like the theremin, you play the Dierhorn without touching it. Unlike the theremin, the three antennas of the Dierhorn, which you can see here, act in their base configuration only as amplitude control and as a switch between two predetermined frequencies. This is called a bellow. As you can hear, the tone of the instrument is very warm and deep. It reminds me of early electronic music instruments such as the theremin or the Ondas Martineau. It's easy to create cinematic soundscapes and deep drones that are very alive due to the way that you play them. The basic connections on the Dierhorn are simple. You've got the in for the power, you've got a mini jack stereo out, and you've got a ground to connect it to other banana gear. Then there are three stereo inputs for each Dierhorn, which you can use to feed alternative sound sources in there. Plus there's a clip so you can run this off a 9 volt battery, which is very handy if you like to sit out in the sun as I do. There are two tuning processes involved with the Dierhorn. The first deals with the proximity antennas. For tuning this instrument, you will need a small flathead screwdriver. Each Deerhorn module has two potes, one on top and one to the bottom. The one up top controls the ring, meaning the decay of the synthesizer. This you could just tune, adjusting to your own taste. The proximity sensor is a bit more difficult. First you set the fine tune to a zero position. I'm using Peter's Zero, which is actually more like one o'clock. I got this tip from Darren Wiener, who runs Patchpoint, who also sells and builds these instruments. You gently put the screwdriver in here until you can feel it touch. And then you find a position right here. And turn it until both lights light. So now you've got a nice, controllable position. Then you repeat the process for all the other diodes. Mm -hmm. 
two things to note. If you adjust the ring, you might have to adjust the proximity sensor again. Also, the antenna is not only reacted to what's up top, but also to what's on the side and what's underneath. So if you get a lot of gear around, that might influence the antennas. So you have to tune it for the place where you're setting up. Luckily, this is a quick and easy process. To tune the deer horn, there are three knobs. The lower one sets the bass frequency. And the two middle ones set the FM modulation amount. This way you get intervals. As you can hear, all three knobs influence each other. That makes it a bit difficult to tune the instrument to say something like a chromatic scale, but you can discover combinations of intervals that you would not have found before, especially when you take into account that you've got three you can tune. Instead of thinking in intervals, I find myself thinking in frequencies how they beat against each other, creating new frequencies, and how you create tone clusters that are not quite drones, but have this early electronic music vibe. As you can see, there are three switches, one for each module. This sets the stereo position of the deer horn. So you can define exactly how each horn should come in and out of the stereo field. This can also be switched in the middle position, where it will act as a bypass for the internal oscillator and will activate the inputs. More on that later. The white outputs are the individual outs for each oscillator. This way you can process each oscillator or you can use it to modulate other stuff. For example, routing it back into the FM ins for more metallic timbres. possible to not only play a bellow, but to play continuous pitch, as you would with a theremin. Therefore you contact the antenna out into an FM modulation in and adjust the amount of modulation to taste.
This requires an intense amount of body control, same as with the original theremin. The red outputs are impulse outs that flip once your hand passes over, same as with the light. These impulses also feed the sample and hold circuit. The sample and hold circuits to the left and to the right take voltage information from each D horn, the yellow one, the orange one and the red one, and both for the in and the out gesture. The sample and hold function can be used to create interesting sequences. Here I'm using the gesture outputs of the red deer horn to modulate the yellow deer horn. Gray ones are very special. They do sample and hold at random times, thus creating less typical sequences. To me the results that I'm getting from the sample and holds are very maze-like. There is a musical quality to them, but of course also a bit of that standard sample and hold synthesizer sound which I personally don't enjoy. But because you can tune everything on the deer horn and you've got attenuators, you can dial in some very musical results if you take the time. It's a bit similar in that regard to the chaos knob on the Coco Quantus. As I mentioned before, all Seattle Lombard instruments play well together and the deer horn is no exception. You can sequence the deer horn with the Seat Lombarde Plumberte. The Plumberte is the drum and drama machine of the Seat Lombarde universe. It's meant to create rhythm and add drama because it has its own deer horn. But what you do for this patch is you take the orange out of the Rolse, which is the rhythm section, and you plug it into the orange out of the deer horn. And you can hear. That the sequence is starting. No need for hand gestures. Same on the others that I've also sequenced via the Rolzer. While this sounds beautiful, you have to watch your levels. The output is much lower than if you play it by hand. So I've turned the response way down. If I played it again by hand, you would quickly hear... Overdrive, which is not what you want. Or maybe you want that, but definitely it will get loud. The Dihon organ can act as a control for the plumb butter too. Here I'm using the impulse outs to trigger different parts of the plumbeter, namely the two AV dogs and the sole deer horn that's on the plumbeter. If 
we add in the orange outputs of the deer horn, you can also control the pitch of the plumbiter. For example, here I'm controlling the pitch of the AV dogs and the gong. Sad robot kitties. Or the Dion can be the six channel gestural stereo mixer. You never know you need it. Here I'm taking a tape loop in Dion number one, the OP1 in Dion number two, and another tape loop in Dion number three. And I've set all the internal oscillators to bypass. Now it's possible to play the mix of these three instruments. As you might have gathered from these examples, the Dion organ is a truly unique instrument. It's lovely standalone, it integrates well with other Seattle Lombarde and modular gear, it can be used to control other synthesizers, and it can be used to play with other musicians, and it can even process audio and become a mixer that's very playable. When you look at the pictures and read the liner notes on the Seattle Lombarde side, you might underestimate what this instrument can do. I hope in this video I showed you a bit more about the depth you can achieve with it. That's it for this video. If you have any more questions, leave them in the comments below. Thank you for watching and see you in the next one.